Hi, this is Emily Zlanian with TV Guide Magazine and TVInsider.com, and I'm here with the cast of Shining Girls. I don't know because I don't know what he looks like. Okay? He could be the guy at a and bagging my milk. He could be the creep behind me. He could be the ass holding up the door. He's everybody. He's nobody. He's all the time. Can you remember anything? Yeah, his voice when he called me a whore. So, who is Kirby? Tell me about this woman. She is deeply complicated. Yes, that mm-hmm. is a very good assessment. Um, Kirby is a woman who is six years after experiencing a com- a very traumatic event uh, where she was attacked. And now she is in a place where her life is constantly changing around her and shifting. Um, and her reality is is ever shifting. And she basically has to figure out why is this happening? Who is doing it and how it's happening? <laughs> how did you come to this project? What is, was the book first? Was there something else? No, it was the script first. Um, I wasn't familiar with the book. I was sent the script and I, I'm actually glad it happened that way because I was able to read it as a viewer, um, as opposed to somebody who was carrying along the book in their head, uh, which is the book is so good that I think it would be really hard to kind of let go of it. Um, so I'm glad that I got to read it first, completely blind, um, just as our audience will experience it. Awesome. You're also directing and executive producing on this project. Um, how much influence would you say you had in Kirby's story and how her momentum moves forward throughout? Uh, it's always a very symbiotic kind of thing that develops because, uh, you know, as an EP and then, of course, as a director, you're involved um, so much more than you would be as an actor at the same time, it's your perspective as an actor that actually ends up being sometimes the most helpful and influential. So, um, the three things are really important for me to have, to feel like I'm fully exploring a project. Um, but I, you know, as we go along and it happens on any show, you know, the scripts are written obviously by brilliant writers then they come to you you have your own perspective as the person playing the character your own questions those goes back to the writers and they work on that the scripts come back so it ends up being in you ideally and i've been lucky in the sense i've had it in the ideal way where it becomes a very collaborative relationship between you as the lead actor director ep and the writers now jamie what drew you to wanting to play this serial killer harper what what was it about him that made you have to play this guy um i mean i you know i I think as actors you're always trying to find something that's you know so far away from who you are as a human being Uh, and he he certainly couldn't be further away from who i am um so that just as a a, for a start um then all the the fantastic creative people i get to work with silica louisa wrote an incredible script and elizabeth moss is one of the best actresses working today michelle mclaren's a proven tested fantastic um hard-working director so all of that but then you know I, I just think as a culture we have a kind of this weird kind of morbid fascination with people like this um i, I think mostly because of, because they terrify us and they terrify me as well because the question always is but why why and how is it possible that people do these kinds of things? Um, so if I also, unfortunately, have that morbid fascination. And, um, and I kind of wanted to explore that and try, not necessarily try and answer it, but just try and kind of um, understand the motivation for, for, for doing these awful things, you know? Yeah. Um, what, so, would you say, what would you say is Harper's motivation? Control. Yeah. It's just control. I mean, I think for most of these men who do this stuff it is all just about domination control um their own inability to control their own compulsions and their own um gratifications um it's that you know basically um i mean i think for harper also like he's incredibly threatened by specifically women who i think he has a deep hatred for and um he's threatened by their success or by their potential or by their achievement, you know, all, all of those things he doesn't possess himself. Um, so he extinguishes th- that in them. He takes away their shine, as it were. So that's it. I mean, you know, the good thing, the great thing about the show is that it also, as the show continues, you really see how we, this character unravels, how he loses control. And um, that's, that was the kind of fun contrast that 
you know, I got to play around with. How would you describe Dan? He is this kind of down on his luck journalist. He's clearly been through some stuff. What's yeah. going on with him? It's interesting because when you when we meet him in a in the first episodes, we know there's something wrong that he's coming from a leave of absence, but we don't know exact, exactly why. I think that that's a character that we start to know him better after episode three, you know, when we meet his kid and we know that he has a problem with alcoholism and, and all that. But he is, what I like about this character is it's, it's his connection with Kirby's, with Kirby, with, with Lizzie's character, because they recognize each other as very people that have sort of similar wounds and scars and they know they know that the that other person is going through something that the other understands which is trying to get their lives back on track thank you so much everyone go watch shining girls it premieres april 29th on apple tv plus